G'day, how you doing? Adam Williams here from Easy Way Photography. Here we are with lesson two on learning the basics, the essentials, if you like, to Photoshop so that we can transform all of our images into the breathtaking landscapes that we desire. That's exactly what we're going to be doing today in this lesson. Lesson one, you'll find a link for lesson one in the description of this video. If you've missed it, jump up there and click and watch that first, I would recommend. In this lesson, what we're going to do is transform our images, process our images using Photoshop adjustment layers and masks. In lesson one, of course, we opened up the file, we set up our workspace, we color corrected, straightened the horizon, removed the dust, and of course, we applied an auto curve. And you can see those adjustments that we've already applied in lesson one right here. Now, of course, if you wish to download this image or you didn't save this image in the previous lesson, there's a link in the description where you can download this image here with all the adjustments already ready to go for this particular lesson. So if you haven't done that already, hit pause, go and download that image and then come back to me and we'll get into it. Okay, so let's do it. So essentially what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is transform the raw file that we have here into something absolutely gorgeous and spectacular like that there. As I said in the previous video, this workflow you can transform into natural, breathtaking, incredible landscape images, or you can do what we're about to do today and transform into a dark and gloomy and moody and emotional type of image if you like too. Okay, now let's jump in and get started. What we're going to do, a little bit of theory behind how I like to process. Now, the human eye is attracted to light, contrast, and color. So in other words, more light, more contrast, more color means more attention in that particular area. And the reverse, less light or darkening, less contrast, and less color means less interest in that particular area. So what we're going to do, we're going to really try and highlight the most interesting area of this image, which is this big, bold, beautiful rock structure in the ocean here. And the way we would do that is to add in a little bit more light to that area, a little bit more contrast to that area, a little bit more color. And what we're also going to do is darken the edges, remove the contrast and remove the saturation to create the highest impact image we can possibly create. Let's start working along that theory. So in Photoshop, you usually want to adjust or do the majority of your lightness and darkening first, and then your contrast, and then your color adjustments, because lightening and darkening and contra because lightening and darkening and contrast adjustments will mess with the color a little bit in Photoshop. So you don't want to start with color and then adjust brightness and contrast and then have to adjust color again. Best to just leave it to the end and we'll adjust the color at the end. Okay, let's get into it. So all of our adjustment layers are found down in this little black and white circle right down the bottom here. Okay, this one here, you'll see them all here. And the great thing about this workflow, we only use two or three of these. Curves, hue saturation. In fact, that's all we're going to be using in this particular workflow today, those two there. Curves will do all our lightening, darkening, and contrast. And hue saturation will do our color adjustments today. Okay, so just two adjustments. So initially, move down there and click on that little black and white circle and select a curves layer. And we're going to brighten up the subject a little bit. So we just add, you should have the properties panel just up above here like I do too. If we just click once in the middle and just drag it in an upwards direction slightly to the left, just something like that, not too far, because if we push too far, you know, those adjustments become rather hard to brush in. They become very, aggressive and a bit blotchy trying to brush them in. So not too far, around about that far if you like. It's not critical, but at roughly about there. Now, we only want to paint this adjustment in and around the subject, just in this central area. And this is where adjustment layers come in. Or oh, sorry, this is where masking comes in. You see this little white box? That's the layer mask. 
And in fact, if we visualize that as a window, when the window is white or clear, we'll call white and clear the same thing. When the window is white, it's clear and the entire adjustment layer is allowed to come through and affect the layers below. Can you see how that's affecting top to bottom, side to side, the entire image? Now, if we click on that mask and press Command or Control I, I for invert, Command I on a Mac or Control I on a PC, it will turn the mask or the window black. Now, the, you don't see anything through a blacked out window, do we? And if we click on the adjustment layer here, you can see nothing's happening. But the adjustment's still there. You can see the adjustment's still there. It's still lightening up the entire image. However, because the window's black, the window's not allowing the adjustment to flow through onto our image and make that adjustment. So just clicking back on my mask here, and if I press B for brush, and before we move on too far, I'll just explain the brush a little bit. So B for brush, or you can move over here and select the brush. And we might just click and hold down on the brush and making sure we all have that little white square next to the brush tool. Otherwise, just click on the brush tool there. Okay, and once again, the square bracket keys are the easiest way, the square bracket keys over near enter or return are the easiest way to change that size quickly. And the brush itself, up along the top, we have all the settings here. We don't need to worry about that menu. Click on this one. This one has size, but the best place to do the size is with the keyboard shortcut, the square brackets. Although if you want to, you can adjust the size up here too. Hardness, make sure your hardness is set to zero and pretty much forget about that. That's all we do in landscapes in Photoshop for the most part. Moving along the mode here on normal. Opacity for the time being, set that at 30%. Set your flow here at 50%. Smoothing, we don't use that. It's more of a graphic design tool. It basically makes the brush strokes a little bit smoother. You know, if you've got a bit of a hand shake or something like that, it'll smooth it out. We don't use that. In fact, we don't use anything else to the, to the right of that panel either for the time being. Now, the brush itself works in conjunction with the palette. The palette is this three icons down the bottom of the tool panel. You can see a big black and white square, well hopefully. In fact, if you don't have a black and white square, you can click on the smaller black and white square, which will change whatever is in the, the bigger icon back to the default of pure black, pure white. We only ever use pure black, pure white in Photoshop on our brush, okay? So if it's not, Click that default there and that will change to pure black, pure white. The little arrow key will switch between black and white. You can also use X on the keyboard to do the same thing. We want white for the time being on the top color to be white and we're ready to go. Now, let's just move back to the mask for a minute. We had our white mask. Let's just go over that again. When our mask is white, you can see the adjustment layer affects the entire image. When we press Command or Control I, turns to black, it affects none of the image. So we press B for brush and we grab a white brush and I'll make the brush a little bit bigger. Opacity 30%, flow at 50% and we just click and sort of click again and do several brush strokes, letting go and clicking again. So click and let go, click and let go, click and let go and see we've managed to brighten up the central region of that image without affecting anything else, which is exactly what we want. And if I hold down Option or Alt and click on the mask, you can see that I've cleaned the window pretty much to white in the middle here, and on the top and on the bottom is in black. So black won't allow the adjustment layer through because the window is painted black and you can't see through there. But in the white section, it's being let through completely, okay? So we've now managed to brighten up the subject without affecting the rest of the image. Let's go and darken around the edges to really help draw attention into the middle. Once again, move down to the black and white cookie, curves layer, and we're going to darken down. Now, normally I would darken by just clicking once in the middle and drag down. But what I want to do, you can see that white bright point there, very distracting. This particular darkening method is not going to get the job done. However, as I said, 
that would be how I would do most of my darkening, but not in this case. I'm just going to hit the reset button at the base of the properties panel here. Okay, and if you happen to get a few points around like that, you can also just pick them up and drag them off the panel like so. But what we're going to do is grab this top point here, right up the top right corner and drag that down. Pretty aggressively, mind you, because we really want to darken those edges down a lot. Okay, and really get that drama happening in this image. So once again, you can see when the mask is white, completely affecting the entire image, across the entire image. But if we press Command or Control I, depending if you're Mac or PC, it's now not affecting anything. But you can see the properties panel still showing the effect. Of course it is. If we press B for brush again and with our white brush, I might just zoom back a little bit actually. Command or Control minus. That will give me some more brush space. And I'm just going to do same brush, 30% and 50%. And lots of clicks. Click and drag, click and drag, click and drag. Or you can spot click. Dob, 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 dob like that. Okay. And we really want to build up the drama in this image like so. Okay. Absolutely beautiful. In fact, this was one of the very first image. I've, I've got a couple of series of work based on my anxiety and depression or living with anxiety and depression. And that's hence the darkness and the gloominess in this particular image. It is an image within a series of mine called Even in the Darkest Days, which is based on anxiety and depression. So there's a bit of a reason why we're going really dark and gloomy. And look, I actually want to create a little bit of a light source coming down from the clouds in this region here. So, but I've already darkened them out a little bit too much. But if I press X or switch my brush to black here, I can just dob out, remove or black out the mask a little bit, which will remove some of that effect, creating a bit of a light source coming down in that direction. Looks absolutely perfect. So even with just two adjustment layers, we've gone from there and you can see we're already building up quite a bit of impact. Okay, so with that light source, what I want to do, I'll just zoom in a little bit, Command or Control Plus, maybe do that twice. What I want to do is create a little bit of a light side to this rock and a dark side because the light's coming from that direction, from the top right. So let's grab another curves layer, curves, and we're going to lighten up the right hand side. So one point in the middle and drag upwards, just like that. Command or Control I to send the mask to black. Hide that effect essentially. And you can see I have a black brush. I want to switch that back to a white brush. And look, a big brush. One of the keys to Photoshop is not like kindergarten where we're told paint inside the lines. That's the color inside the lines. Photoshop, no, paint outside the lines. That's a bit of a pro trick there. Paint outside the lines. And we generally don't need to worry too much about fancy masks. Although, Within the full course, I do teach the fancy masks as well, obviously, but all we're going to do is we're just going to do a bit of a general brush, and we just brush on that edge and then fade it out like that. So brush, brush, fade, fade, beautiful. Make the brush a little bit smaller, we'll come down that section, fade, fade, beautiful. That's exactly what we want, okay? And you can see that we've applied that in generally onto that right hand sides of those rocks and then just faded it into the sky perfect let's darken down and add some shadow to the other side which is going to give a lot of dimension and drama curves again this time one point in the middle and drag down perfect command or control i to invert same story we're just going to relatively generalize this adjustment just on the right hand side right hand side down a bit there if you're painting the light in like that, you might expect a bit of a shadow out that way. Let's paint a bit of a shadow there and there. Perfect, looking great. Okay, let's add some contrast. Contrast is very attractive also. Um, so we really want to just apply it to the main subject. Once again, a curves layer. And contrast, we add two points to the adjustment layer. One, about 20, 25% in from the bottom and one a similar distance from the top, roughly like that. And we just click and drag the bottom point down a little bit. Yep, just a little bit. Click and drag the top point up a little bit. Not too much, but contrast is all about darkening the darks, hence pulling down the bottom point and brightening the brights. And that's exactly what we've done. 
you can see that's given a lot of contrast into there and a lot more drama, which is great. If we click on that layer mask, press Command or Control I to invert, we now have that mask in black. Of course, when it was white, it was affecting everywhere in black, affecting nowhere. Grab our white brush and we're just going to paint this three or four clicks over our subject. That looks great. Bleed it out a bit, as I said. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. A little bit of contrast, a little bit of added interest into there. Okay, I'm feeling like before we do the color, let's go super dramatic and extra dark. So another curves layer. Dark and pull and drag down from the middle like so. Yeah, something like that. We don't want to go too far. Once again, in white, you can see affecting the entire image. Command or Control I to invert. We now have inverted that to black and we can use that same white brush. I'll just make that image a little smaller with Command or Control minus. And we can just paint that in using that same brush and just get, look, just get extra added drama. Look, as I said, you might want a breathtaking style of image. And what I might do, I'll produce another video tomorrow night and we'll do the same workflow, but we'll do it to a more natural image. So you can see the workflow and how it works in a different way. That's all we want. That's looking absolutely beautiful. Let's tweak the colors a little bit. We're down to the adjustment layer icon, hue saturation layer. And I want to remove some of the color from the extreme edges because color is very attractive and it's very blue out there and I want to remove that so it's more gray. So in actual fact, I'll just pull the saturation slider. Oh, look, almost all the way down, minus 75 looks good. Command or Control, once again, the same workflow. Command or Control I to invert, using that same brush, just lots of clicks over those deep blue areas in the sky. Might need five or six this time. Make the brush a little smaller so I don't take too much color away from my subject there. Okay, might take a little bit of color from the edges of the ocean too for the same reasons. That's looking great. Let's do the opposite now. Let's add some color into our subject, which will help give us more impact and more interest in the subject. So hue saturation, push the slider the other way this time, maybe about 15 or 20. Let's keep it a little bit subtle. At 50, subtle, who am I to be subtle? Look what I've done to this image, but 15 points looks good. Command or control I to invert and five or six clicks around the middle of the image. Okay. And just like that, I think we're pretty much done. Okay, so let's take a look at where we started here. If I move down to the bottom layer here and hold down Option or Alt and click on the little eyeball icon there, removes all the layers. So we get before, dust spots and all. And then did we manage to create more impact, more interest, more drama by adding more light contrast and color in the middle and removing a lot of light contrast and color from the outside. I'll let you be the judge. I think so. Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Look, as I said, tomorrow evening, I'll drop another tutorial and we'll do a much more natural, breathtaking, beautiful image of a landscape rather than this kind of dark, gloomy one that we've created here. But I think you'll agree, it's quite the impact on this particular image. Now, this is only a condensed version of the workflow. If you want the entire workflow, I'm going to put a link in the description where you can get the entire Essentials five-step workflow for just $1. So if you're interested in that, check it out. But otherwise, come back tomorrow night, we'll do it all again and create a beautiful, breathtaking image. Thanks again for watching along. I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.